Hello, 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 and welcome back to the podcast. Um, and yeah, it has been not a long time. For once, I have done something consistently, and it is nice to be back. I like recording podcasts, except it is absolutely melting hot in here. Uh, for anyone in Bangalore, you might be experiencing it. My phone says it's twenty-seven degrees. Doesn't feel like twenty-seven. Feels like fifty. but um uh, yeah for any americans in my audience of one um it's not uh, it's 50 degrees celsius i'm talking about but yeah anyway bangalore a city known for good weather is now suffering from slightly less than averagely good weather um yeah but i like i like i love summer summer is my favorite like my second favorite season this is my favorite season this is actually maybe this could be a podcast by itself Do you think uh do you think uh this thing exists do you think spring exists in India I think it does uh some people who I talk to do not but uh yeah I think spring exists and I think spring is right now and I think spring is the best season in the world anyway so uh if anyone has been on the internet in the last like 2 months you would have heard of chat gpt which is basically like this crazy ai chatbot uh it basically took over the internet for a while which is fun the internet doesn't really get a lot of things to nerd out over but chat gpt was one of them and uh, eventually they got like invested in heavily by microsoft and uh, so they basically integrated microsoft integrated chat gpt into into bing the the search engine that gets memed for being inferior anyway uh so with google also kind of playing catch up to some extent to with open ai and bing i want like before it came i wanted to figure out whether bing chat was indeed an improvement over chat gpt which is what open ai and microsoft suggested and whether it has perfected the art of the chatbot a uh, spoiler it has not and podcasts that i've listened to myself seem to suggest that um google bard is dog water it is trash uh pardon my strong language but it's apparently pretty bad especially compared to bing and maybe it'll be the first time we have bing being better than google at something which will be fun capitalism i'm a big capitalism fan this is a very big capitalism moment if google ends up being worse than bing anyway uh let's just ditch capitalism that should be something that we should ask bing chat about its thoughts on capitalism but anyway my plan today was actually to just compare chat gpt to bing chat over like six vague uh, parameters i don't think parameters is the right word but like types of questions but yeah so that's what i did it took forever it took so much time for some reason i figured out bing is kind of slower because it has to search the web and stuff but yeah it's it took forever but it was fun i like I liked memeing Bing Chat. So yeah, these there were like uh six uh types of questions I asked. I asked uh math questions, writing questions, comparisons, information based questions, complex prompts and how it works questions. I don't know why I made that separate, but I did, which is um yeah, interesting. So let's uh I'll b- oh, let's let's just get into it. I want to talk about what I figured out after using these uh chatbots. So first of all let's talk about math, okay? So uh the um uh overall actually you know before let's uh let's do something. I'll tell you the questions and I'll tell you what these uh, guys answer and my like observations. So uh Bing, I asked what is 3056 plus 2019 minus 1001 and it gave the answer the correct answer of 4047 um chat gpt also did the same thing and it, it gave a bit more of a detailed answer it says um quote one second it says quote you can start by performing the addition of 3056 and 2019 which gives 5075 and then you can subtract 1001 from this result to obtain the final answer of 4047 so both of these did fine Initially I don't know I don't know if ChatGPT has improved but I know initially ChatGPT was kind of dog water at math and uh, it it would just like spew out random numbers as the answer 
but now it at least seems to know basic operations and so does bing which is a pretty big improvement over what um over what these guys uh over what it used to be at least i don't know what uh happened but it has an improvement now the second question was an algebra one it's a little bit more complex it was i have 5 dollars in dimes and nickels i have 70 coins in total how many dimes and nickels do i have so i designed this question so that i know the answer of course cuz i don't know if these guys will bs but um being actually got this question wrong it said that you will have 60 dimes and 10 nickels which is completely incorrect because if you have 60 dimes you will have 6 dollars already um then uh, one of the prompts like usually when you uh, get an answer it gives some like options some like suggested prompts so to speak one of them was can you show me the steps so i asked it to show me the steps and it said here are the steps multiply multiply the first equation by 0.01 to eliminate x 0.1x plus 0.1y equals 7 which is fair 0.1x plus 0.05y is equal to 5 which is yeah okay yeah, yeah yeah that's also okay multiply the first equation yeah subtract the second equation from the first equation to eliminate x um okay so if you subtract 0.1x from 0.1x you should get 0 which is true If you subtract 0.1 from 0.05, you get 0.05, which is also true. Seven minus y equals two. So sub, uh, the Bing has gotten this right. Now it says divide both sides by 0.05 to get y. So uh, two divided by 0.05. I actually don't know what this is. Um, I probably should. Twenty two hundred divided by five, and that is forty. So y is equal to forty, which is correct. Now uh. Y so substitute y equals forty in the first equation to get x, which is x plus forty equals seventy. Y equals seventy minus forty equals thirty, and then check the answer. Blah blah blah. So yeah. So what's weird is it figured out the answer. Figured out that y is equal to forty. That is, you have forty. Uh, is it dimes? No, you have forty nickels. Yeah, you have forty nickels. Forty nickels and thirty dimes. One second, yeah, forty nickels and thirty dimes. So that is actually correct. But for some reason, when I did the initial calculation, I don't know if it was calculating. It got sixty dimes and ten nickels. Anyway, but uh, yeah, I uh, I deducted points for that. And the integration, uh, I asked an integrated integration question, which is integrate three x square plus four x cube from x to ten. Um. So it figured out the 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 indefinite integral correctly. It figured out it was x cube plus x x to the fourth plus c, but it did uh, so it did uh, evaluate f of x at upper and lower limits of integration, which is the correct step. But it figured out x pro x to the power of three plus ten to the power of three plus ten to the power of four equals one 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 zero eleven thousand eleven hundred, which is um. Eleven hundred and ten, even that, which is completely incorrect. So it got the wrong answer. Now ChatGPT actually got all of these questions right, and it got it uh, mostly correct. Something kind of weird is in uh, in the uh, the dimes question. It said uh, uh, so. It said d plus n equals seventy, which is fine, and ten d plus five n equals fifty. And it says the second equation is derived from the fact. That each dime is worth ten cents and each nickel is worth five cents, so the total value of coins is dollar five or five hundred cents. So it says it's five hundred, but for some reason in the equation it's written as fifty, but it works with five hundred eventually. Anyway, so uh, it got the answer right and it got the answer for the integration question. So um, yeah, so overall I want I gave B a C minus and ChatGPT an A, um, because well B uh Bing got it wrong. So yeah. Uh. So now let's talk about writing. That was the second. Uh, English maybe is a more apt way of looking at it, but writing was the second. Um. Uh. Parameter. Second group of questions. So the first question. Let's go again. Let's start off with Bing. First question was, can you write a two hundred word essay about the causes of World War One? So, a uh, Bing's essay is like accurate. It uses pretty good information. The war was triggered by the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary by Serb nationalists in Sarajevo in two, June on June twenty eighth, nineteen fourteen. This event sparked a diplomatic crisis that escalated into a war between the two countries and their allies. So, um, there was and it also talks about the long term factors contributing to the war, 
which is imperialism militarism nationalism alliances and just and yeah that's all so um yeah so it's not a bad essay i don't think it's uh like too terrible but it's like somewhat generic so to speak then uh second i took like an extract from macbeth the first act first scene and i asked it to analyze it um analyze it in terms of structure audience purpose and language features used so uh, it said here is an analysis blah 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 it is from act 1 scene 2 of macbeth i don't know from scene 2 scene 1 i just googled macbeth and i figured out i just copied over like two dialogues so structure is written in blank verse blah 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 i don't really know if this is accurate but it seems fine the text is meant for the audience of this play who would be watching it on stage also addresses characters within the scene malcolm duncan ross and before the blah 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 blah, blah. so overall i want to say um it's good is a good essay it talks about everything that i asked it to and it actually uh, like for the language features it talks about metaphor and alliteration repetition and it's a pretty good analysis but uh something that kind of ticked me off is that it used points instead of like an actual essay doesn't say it in terms of a full paragraph but i guess that's an approach thing then the third question was can you write an a level essay about the causes of the french republic focus on focusing on economic reasons so this was also a pretty good answer in terms of the information and the content in the answer but again it suffers from uh, the weird issue where it just for some reason decides to put everything in points honestly points are not a bad idea in terms of trying to convey information but in an essay you really don't want it to be in points especially because i have confirmed or rather i have specified that it should be an a level essay if i wrote in points my a level essay would be completely screwed so yeah uh that's um bing so next question is define internalize it basically just ripped something out of um a bunch of like online dictionaries and then write an alliteration about going to the gym in the evening this is a pretty nice alliteration gina goes to the gym in the evening to get her gains and grow her glutes she grunts and groans with every lift and gulps a green smoothie after she greets her friends with glee and grace and glows with sweat on her gorgeous face so it's a, it's like it's not great but it's like better than what i could write so it's fine so now chat gpt the essay was again very nice honestly i think the essay was better than uh, bing's maybe bing's information was nicer but i really liked how chat gpt formatted it it's written with a pretty clear introduction and conclusion and the um, the body is also pretty straight forward as well which is very very nice now the analysis um also i i like i like the content a little better than i liked of than of bing um although it's a little bit more generic like it says the audience of that this text is likely a reader a viewer of the play macbeth by shakespeare the language uses archaic and poetic with a focus on vivid descriptions and figurative language it suggests that the audience would be able to ap- appreciate the artistry of the language the audience is also likely familiar with the historical context of the play and the characters involved which is a pretty nice analysis although it's a bit generic because macbeth you could suggest that macbeth was uh, the audience of macbeth wouldn't really consider the language archaic but anyway uh, that's irrelevant but the purpose was also pretty most of it was actually pretty nice but the language was a little bit less detailed um so chat gpt so far seems to be holding up the a level essay was also really nice um uh again really not as much content as bing but it maintains a pretty nice uh, structure of the essay with a clear uh, introduction and conclusion and define internalize internalize means this is uh, it feels like it's from past knowledge and not like a direct definition which i don't know if the good or bad thing but it's a thing nonetheless so it says internalize means to fully absorb and integrate something such as knowledge values or attitudes into one's own way of thinking or being blah 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 so it's um yeah it it talks about internalize only in one sense which is how well i intended this podcast to be but uh that's not every definition of course and <laughs> right an alliteration the alliteration was dog I eagerly i entered the echoing evening gymnasium which is weird how do you use evening as an adjective i do not know so bing i will give a b minus because the formatting was a little bit off and the answers were also somewhat generic 
but the performance was pretty nice in the vocab section as well as the content itself was very strong so chat gpt uh, i would say maybe bing is a b and a chat gpt chat gpt is a b minus because i really liked how essay essay ish the essays were but the 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 answers were a little bit less uh, detailed and creative so to speak now comparisons this is pretty nice this i'm tra- basically i asked like three three different comparisons and uh, so the first one was compare the m1 macbook air to the old intel i5 macbook air so uh, this was really nice i really like that uh, bing uses a lot of sources and it like it allows for allows you to basically like click uh, click through and figure out where it is figuring out information from which is honestly really cool and really something that i appreciated most of the information was also really quite um accurate like it said the macbook air is uh 92900 in india whereas the intel is around 83610 which is actually pretty accurate to how much it costs which is crazy there's no way the macbook intel macbook is worth 83000 rupees but uh yeah so it looks pretty nice it seems pretty cool then i asked it to compare a raspberry pi to an arduino mega so uh it says raspberry pi is a single board computer arduino mega is a microcontroller board blah 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 raspberry pi is more of a powerful and versatile arduino mega does not require an operating system lower io current uh, drive strength than a uh, for raspberry pi raspberry pi has more config options raspberry pi uses more power and raspberry pi has a logic level of 3.3 volts whereas the lo- arduino mega has a logic level of 5 volts so um uh there are a couple of similarities also which is really nice i really like these the comparisons that these um that uh, bing uh gave like really really accurate stuff and i really like the sources as well third one which is begin better for beginner programmers python or javascript and this is also really good this is a really really good python has more applications in data science um uh javascript has li- uh but javascript is used more in web development python has simpler more readable syntax so javascript is better performance and speed blah 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 so all really really nice stuff from the side of bing chat gpt again it's probably a little worse than um than bing for now but i really like how these uh, chat gpt managed to format the information so um i uh, the macbook comparison i asked it about performance power uh, i asked it just to compare and it gave me performance power efficiency compatibility and price it compared all of these which is really really cool and um, it also gave a pretty good uh, uh it gave a conclusion which it like rarely does but it does um uh again the raspberry and arduino mega pa- performance capability ease of use price and it also gave a judgment you it depends on the specific need of the project which is awesome uh javascript for this one they didn't use points which is a little weird but um yeah it said python is easy to learn for beginners it's used here the syntax is easy to learn wealth of resources blah 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 a uh, python may be better for people interested in data science ml and scientific computing javascript is better for those in web development and mobile app web de- development so yeah i like how chat gpt formatted it really well uh, it formatted it really well but i think it's really limited by its small data set that's why i had to compare the m1 to the intel otherwise i would have compared the m1 to the um m2 macbook air but chat gpt has no information on the m2 so again information for bing so overall the comparisons i'm giving a bing in a minus really really good uh, overall uh, information takes into account most important points and it's very up to date um i want to give chat gpt a b or a b plus too because it's very um very good information as far as what it knows and good formatting but it's still very very like definitely limited by what it knows now the third or i don't know was this fourth or fifth or whatever this is i think fourth yeah the fourth uh, leg is information based prompts so bing i asked what are good phones at the 70000 uh, rupee price price range so it said oneplus 11 5g iphone 13 and iq 11 5g i don't know if they got uh, hit by an ad or something but i've never seen the iq 11 5g in any of these lists 
the iPhone 13 is a little bit understandable because it's kind of old and you can get it for pretty cheap on Amazon. But um, it's crazy. How do you not put the Pixel, uh, Pixel 6 or the 7 in any case? Either of them, do you, how do you not put any of them under this price range? Uh, how do you not um, include other phones? Okay, nothing comes to mind. But there are quite a few things that I just completely missed out by Bing, which is a little weird. Uh, the second prompt was what are good thin and light laptops less than $1,500. It said Asus Zenbook S, sure. Apple MacBook Air, sure. LG Gram, mm, sure. Again, you're missing the XPS, you're missing the De uh, HP Spectre, you're missing uh, the Microsoft Surface. I don't know, it's not a thin and light. But you're, you're, missing, you're missing very obvious choices here, which is very depressing. Uh, Chat GPT, uh, very nice. 70k uh, rupees it says iphone 13 mini galaxy is 21 plus one plus nine pro pixel 6 and reno 6 pro again it's a little a little weird a little uh information wise why is it telling me a mid-range phone when i'm asking for a 70k phone but it is it's pretty nice although again old information doesn't really know much about the newest phones so that's a little bit sad um good thin and light laptops this is a lot nicer it says uh dell xps 13 Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, Zenbook 13, uh, HP Spectre 3 X360, and Acer Swift 5. Again, it's fine, but you're missing the M1 MacBook Air. Like, uh, you miss, these guys miss such obvious choices, which is really infuriating because this is something this would be ideally so good at. Uh, just comparing things really fast, which is something, you know, machines are good at doing a lot of things really fast. But it's just, it's so disappointing that, <laughs> that this is like so, so bad. So you can't really completely rely on this for research. So Bing, uh, it says I'm giving it a C, C minus, maybe a C plus where, because again, obvious options, a uh, chat GPT, same issue. And it has like older, um, it, like it's all limited by its information. So again, things to just take it to a C minus or a C. Now, complex prompts. This was some pretty uh, heavy, heavy stuff. Uh, the first one was give me low, good low calorie snacking foods that are high in protein and fiber without palm oil. So there's a little bit of uh, an extra prompt. I mean, it's like there are a lot of things to keep in track of. And uh, it's a little, um, it's cool. Uh, so I want to see how these things handle, um, you know, what to do uh handle such complex prompts so it says uh veggies and hummus sure apple slices natural peanut butter sure hard boiled egg coconut chips pistachios of which i think most of these are pretty nice but i want to say hard boiled eggs isn't really a snacking food it's just something you take and eat but um yeah so it's a bit of a deviation from the prompt uh again there's not real much information about palm oil so it feels to some extent that it's just like aggregating results from the web but i cannot be certain i have pasta and olive oil at home what can i make for dinner that's the second prompt it says again it's just it just feels like it's integrating results from the web simple mediterranean olive oil pasta olive oil pasta simple pasta with olive oil and garlic pasta aglio e olio i don't know how you pronounce it but it is a straight up rip of the web results it's just completely taking it and re um turning it into some sort of list which is very, very, very sad, honestly. Um, you'd hope that it takes information from these web results and turns it into something more usable, but it doesn't. Now, chat GPT. Uh, give me good low calorie snacking foods that are high in protein and fiber without palm oil. Um, it says edamame, roasted chickpeas, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, hummus with vegetables, hard boiled eggs, apple slices with peanut butter and roasted almonds. Again, hard boiled eggs, why? But it, it does give more options and most of it do seem pretty reasonable. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, most of And it actually talks about uh, palm oil in the roasted almond section. But yeah, it seems pretty nice. Mostly. I have pasta and olive oil at home. What can I make for dinner? It says a classic Italian dish called spaghetti aglio e olio. Spaghetti with garlic and oil. So that is, that's actually what I wanted. That was hoping, that was the answer I was hoping for. And it gives the recipe after it. So chat GPT, uh, very good information. And, uh, so I will give it an A minus 
and being probably a B or a B minus because the information was fine, but there's a bit of a deviation from the prompt, and it just feels like a re, uh, just like the web results, but like not really. Now, the last prompt is how does it work? This is a, I don't know if this is complex or easy, but it was a prompt nonetheless. Uh, so the first question: How does generative AI work? So this says uh, Bing's answer was pretty nice. It says it talks about um what it is. So generative AI systems use generative models such as large language models to statistically sample new data based on training data set that was used to clear, create them. It has a, a potential applications across blah blah blah. Some examples are blah blah blah. So it's a pretty nice beginner friendly answer. Um, what are lang large language models? Uh, there are language models consisting of a neural network with many parameters be trained on large quantities of unlabeled text using self-supervised supervised learning. They perform, emerged around 2018 and blah blah blah. Uh, they use the transformer architecture which is deep learning technique for sequential data. They train to maximize probability assigned to the next word in training data given the previous context. So yeah, I mean it's a bit less beginner friendly but yeah it's good information. It seems accurate most of the time. Uh, now why does popcorn pop? Fine. Water trapped inside its kernel. Water turns into steam, builds pressure and it puffs. Blah blah blah. So that uh, it seems mostly accurate and mostly good. Chat GPT, um, well, it it, I don't know whether to rank it better or worse, but it completely goes. It gets really like in the weeds and jargonistic with stuff. Like it talks about variational auto encoders, generative adversarial networks, and auto recursive models. So they do um, explain it, but it's uh, well, it's a little bit extra, so to speak. So. Uh, yeah what are large language models again uh similar similar stuff uh duh, 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 duh. it's the same same issue it just goes a little bit extra and uh even for the popcorn thing it goes a little bit extra so i don't know i think chat gpt is a little bit more beginner friendly i mean sorry bing is a little bit more beginner friendly and chat gpt is a bit more like advanced i can't really speak to the accuracy of these things but yeah, so I want to say uh, ChatGPT as well as Bing both get like an A minus because of like, you know, information is pretty nice. So you can't really fault that. So <laughs> to conclude, basically Bing Chat in its current iteration is an, is an upgrade over ChatGPT. So you can't really say that the natural language has improved that much. And uh, yeah, the natural language ability is even though it's moving from GPT-3, the old uh, last language model to GPT-4. Not much has changed, but um, at least not not that you can see yet. But um, its ability to search the web to get like up to date information that is really crucial, and uh, that's what I think is what makes it better. Even though like on many things, ChatGPT actually seems to um give off more reasonable answers than Bing. Uh, there are some cases where uh, most of these stuff seem to be most of the answers seem to be like a rebundle of web search results. But uh, it does uh, overall. I think it's pretty. Um, it's good. I think uh, having uh, the ability to search the web was is crucial for ChatGPT's success, um, or rather Bing Chat success. And I think that's what well makes it so much better than Bing, than ChatGPT. What am I saying? So yeah, that is all for today. I I also this is in blog post form by the way. But I think the podcast is a more detailed, better analysis. I should have plugged the podcast in the blog but I did not because I'm dumb but that is all for today and I will see you next week thank you for listening and goodbye